we'll start with questions for the coach. We'll go to Mark Spector. Hey, Mark. Hey, Pete, how are you? Good. Good, listen, I'm, I'm working on a thing with Vegas. I wonder, I wonder if I could ask you, you know, Bill Foley right down and George McPhee and, and Kelly, they built this culture there, right? Guys like coming there. I think free agents like coming there. They've got, you know, the facilities are good. In today's NHL, how big an advantage is it building a team and keeping a good team where you never run into the stuff other teams run into? Maybe a guy wants to leave or maybe it's hard to get your family to come. Is, is that a distinct advantage, that whole culture you guys have going in Vegas? <clears throat> For sure, it's an advantage, I think, um, you know, but, but it's an advantage uh, that isn't accidental. I, I mean, uh, obvious, obvious location and city it, is great, but, uh, you know, I, I think uh, they run a first-class team. Guys want to go uh, where they have an opportunity to win and they, and they can have a great lifestyle. And, um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, the, the opportunity to win piece is the piece. There's a lot of great cities, but not everyone wants to go there. Um, and I think that's where Bill and George and, and Kelly, uh, you know, have put the template in right from day one that um, the expectation is to win. We're, we're going to win. We're going to spend to the cap to win uh, every year and do whatever we have to do in order to win. And, you know, pe people want to work in that type of environment. We'll go to Ben Go Goats. Hey, Ben. Hey, Pete, you guys are obviously the first uh, U.S.-based team to travel out to Canada. Uh, just what's it going to be like, I guess, having some extra restrictions in place this trip compared to what you guys have uh, become used to in the postseason? Well, it wasn't that long ago we were, you know, eating our, our meals in boxes uh, that you'd pick up in the lobby on your way through to, to, to checking in. You know, you're, you're only uh, a couple months removed from that, so... Um, it's not a big deal. It's actually, uh, it's, it's easier than it was at, at that point or some of the, uh, things we had to deal with in the bubble. So, uh, I think everybody's used to that and, uh, you know, we'll get through it. We're here. We're here. It's a business trip. We're here to, to win some hockey games. We'll go to Steven Wino. Steven. Hey Pete. Uh, did Chandler Stevenson travel with you guys and do you expect him to play tomorrow? Chandler is day to day. We'll go to Alexander Gamel. Alexander. Hey, Pete. Um, uh, your defensemen have posted some impressive numbers these first two games, but your forwards have only scored one goal and don't have that many shots on goal. They're usually pretty uh, um, effective, but held off the score sheet against Montreal. Um, what is it? Can you explain? how they don't find a way to score? Um, you know, I, I think every series is different. Um, you know, I think there's always ebbs and flows to your scoring. Sometimes the defensemen are chipping in. Sometimes it's a forward. Sometimes it's the power play. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't see it as a season series trend. I, I think our forwards are going to score. I think, think we've created some good looks. So. Uh, we've just got to stick with it. We'll go to Simon Olivier Lavange. Simon. Hey, Pete. Uh, I know you're, you didn't give clear update about Stevenson, but I wanted to, to have your appreciation of the work of your other centermen last night, like Colizar and Nicolas Roy. It's, a, it's quite a big step for them to play on a top line with the guys like Pacioretty and Stone. What did you think of their work, and how do you feel about using Nicolas Roy in the power play? Yeah, you know, those two young guys did a great job for us. You know, it's a big, it's a big ask by us to... Uh, to, uh, for them to jump into those spots in the conference finals, you know, down to the final 14. So it's a big responsibility, but I, I, thought, I thought both guys have earned the opportunity and, and I thought both guys played really well again last night for us. So, um, you know, you look at uh, Montreal and they've got young players playing pretty key situations for them too in spots. 
I think uh, if you're going to go on any kind of deep run, I, I think you have to have to be able to rely on your depth, and, and those guys are, are are good depth players for us. Go to Justin Emerson. Hey, Justin. Hi, Pete. Um, first off, how's your French? And number two, I know you guys are kind of in a are kind of bubbled up, but have you seen a bit of an excitement from the French speaking guys on the team being back in Montreal? Yeah, my, my French, uh, I mean, in, in growing up in Canada, you're required to take French. Uh, I, I would liken it to Spanish in the United States in, in high school as a, a mandatory class. So I, I haven't uh, used it a lot since high school. I, I would say I'm, I'm very, very average. Uh, Although I can can order a meal in, in French, uh, I've gotten got the ability to do that. Um, our our French Canadian guys are very excited. You know, you you can see when they talk about coming here and growing up around here and watching the Montreal Canadiens and you know what it means to be a French Canadian player in the NHL, um, anywhere in the NHL, but coming back home to play in Montreal. You know, it's the same as uh, as Ontario kids coming home to play in Toronto or uh, Western Canadian kids coming home to play in Calgary. It's it's special, and um, you know they're they're excited, and you can see that. We'll go to JF Chamon. Hey JF. Hi Pete. I will not ask my question in French. I promise. <laughs> um, I just like you no know, facing Carey Price. What what's the challenge? I know in the first first round you faced Cam Talbot. After that, it was Grubauer who was a candidate for the the Vizina. But is it something different facing Price? Can he be the type of goalie who's going to be entering the, the, the minds of your players? Well, I, I think he has that capability. I think he's done that in previous series. Uh, you know, that, that's on us to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, he, he's an elite goalie like those other guys you talked about. And, uh, but, but he's just a piece of their team and their identity and, and what makes them uh, a really tough team to play against. So, um, you know, we, we have to uh, we have to find a way. We did in game one, we didn't in game two. We'll come back in game three and go at it again. We'll take two more for the coach, Eric Engels. Hi, Eric. Hi, Pete. Thanks for doing this. Um, knowing you said that Stevens. Go ahead, Eric. Oh, sorry. Uh, thanks for doing this, Pete. I know you said that Stevenson is day to day. Um, if tomorrow is not his day, how does that how does that present? What kind of challenge does that present with not owning the matchup situation and being on visiting ice? <clears throat> well, you know, it it, uh, it tests your depth, but it's no different than them playing yeah, okay. without Petrie in Game One or you know John Merrill in Game One everybody is facing injuries and, and guys in and out of the lineup or playing hurt this time of year, you know, home road, you have last change. You don't, you have to find a way. So, um, you know, I, I think uh, we're prepared to deal with that. We've dealt with injuries to guys. We got through the first round without Max Pacioretty until game seven. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, it's not the first time we've had, injuries or things like that. We had Braden McNabb on the COVID list for two weeks during round two against Colorado. Uh, just another one of those little pieces of adversity that you have to deal with on the, on the playoff trail. Our last question for the coach will be John Morosi. Hey, John. Hi, Pete. Thanks for your time. Uh, certainly every team plays differently when they have the lead, but what makes Montreal so effective in the neutral zone, especially when they have the lead? I think they've got good structure. They make it tough to, to come through the neutral zone. And I, I think whether they have the lead or don't have the lead, I think that's the case. You know, they, they've, uh, they, they've got good structure through the neutral zone. So, uh, you know, I, I think the, the playing with the lead thing is, uh, is a little overblown. I think, um, yes, they got the lead last game. I, I thought we put enough pressure and, and were successful enough to, to, to scratch back in that game and find a way to tie it. We just didn't finish some of the opportunities, but, um, you know, I, I think the history of the NHL shows if you can get out in front, you, you've got a much better chance of winning, whether you're the Montreal Canadiens with their neutral zone or, or anybody else. 
Thanks very much for your time, Cole.